My name is Jan Lauter. I'm from the Netherlands. And my documentary is called The Last Days of Shizmarev. In 2005, I read an article in a French newspaper, Liberation, and it was about an island um, in the north of Alaska, just beneath the polar circle, an island which is going to disappear because of the change of climate. And when I read that article, it, it, it stuck me, you know, because uh, I thought by myself, Jesus Christ, those are Americans driven out of their home by global warming, you know, and on, on the island there's a, a community of 600 Inupiaq Eskimos living over there and they have to leave their island, you know, and when, when, when I read that article it, 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 I saw immediately a documentary in it because it's very dramatical and it has two different uh, stories which are interwoven, you know. One is that the traditional lifestyle of the Inupiaqs is fading away, you know, because of the, the, the dominant Western culture. And on the other hand, those people have to leave their island, which is even more uh, dramatical, dramatic for them. So, um, well, when I read that article, I immediately knew, okay, I'm going to try to get in touch with this, those people and uh, try to find uh, the possibility to make a documentary about it. When I came there the first time, you have to realize it's kind of the end of the world, you know? I realized then, when I got out of the little plane, it was like if, if the earth was flat, you know? It was like the end of the world. And then I met those real nice uh, people and uh, when, when, when I walked around the island, which is not that, that big, I saw two houses, you know, which were fallen from the cliff on, in, on, in, onto the beach. And that was for me immediately a metaphor for the whole situation. And, um, well, I'll... I'll I got in touch with three families who are the main characters, characters in the film and uh, they were so nice and I got involved into their lives and they were willing to cooperate to make this documentary. A big difference between all the other uh, media crews who came in on, to Shizmarev uh, to do an item on it, because Shizmarev has been world news. Uh, it's been in the New York Times, there's articles in, in newspapers all over the world, magazines, ABC Nightline has done a show on it, Each, HBO has done a sh show on it. It was even in the Oprah Winfrey show when there was a special show with Al Gore and he mentioned Shizmarev uh, as the, 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 you know, that those community, those 600 people are the first victims of global warming. And, but the, 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 the difference between all those journalists and, and, and myself was that I didn't stay for just one day. I came in for three, four weeks doing research. After that I came with my cameraman, man, Malavanessa, uh, the, the director of photography for uh, location scouting and then we had uh, four or five weeks in winter time when, when we did a shooting and then we came back in summertime and then we also did the unofficially world premiere in Shizmara for the community three months ago and that was a great experience because the whole community came to the gym, I mean to the sports hall uh, where we set up a screening for them. And of course we still are in touch with, uh, with the families, with the school, with the kids. We also initiated a photo book by Dana Luxemburg, a very well-known photographer, a, a Dutch uh, woman, she's living in New York City. We are doing an exhibition on the subject and also a very special website. And we cooperate with the school uh, um, of Shizmarev. So it maybe changed their lives a little bit, but it changed my life, of course, also a lot, you know. 
And uh, so I hope they can achieve to go to the mainland 50, 50 miles from Shizmaref within five, six years to continue their traditional lifestyle. But to go there, it costs about a hundred million dollars and there's not yet uh, that amount of money. Um, so the, the future is still very uncertain for them. Well, it was a very difficult production. To set up this production was difficult because you're filming in extremely cold weather conditions, you know. Uh, I, I'm not very well in Fahrenheit, but we had uh, temperatures 40 below uh, Celsius, uh, which is very cold, <laughs> I can tell you. And, uh, but also, you know, to go with them on a hunt with snowmobiles, you know, 100 miles or 50 miles through the, 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 the landscapes over there, which are overwhelming, but with the cold wind and the snow, well, it's, it's hard. It's really a kind of a, an expedition, you know? But with the help of them and with the very good preparation we, we did, uh, it all worked out fine. And to be honest, the more difficult it is, the more uh, interesting it is for me. You know, it's a challenge. And to fulfill that challenge gives you a lot of satisfaction. I've made 25 documentaries, some feature documentaries. And when I look back, I like all of them in a way. You know, of course you have memories about special one. Well, now when I'm in Los Angeles again, I have a special, uh, special memories about the documentary which I shot completely in LA. Uh, most of it in downtown LA. It's on a, uh, an American writer, John Fante. He wrote a masterpiece called Ask the, Dutch, Ask the uh, Dust, sorry. and I did a film, a documentary film on him and on Los Angeles, which was called A Sad Flower in the Sand, which is a name he created for Los Angeles. And I had the, um, well, was very honored when I had this film on the uh, AFI Fest in 2001, and they awarded me with a special jury mention for it. So, you know, maybe now I can win this documentary competition with the last days of Shizmaref. When I was invited here in 2001 to, uh, to come for a set flower in the sand and do some Q&As and other things, I met Chess Bennett and Juliana Brennan. And Chess is the director of programming right now and we have had such a wonderful time. People were so, so, so overwhelming for me. And they liked this, this documentary because it was situated in their hometown. But because, you know, they looked with a different view on Los Angeles uh, by that documentary. And because uh, the, I, uh, the, IF, the AFI is a very prestigious festival, I thought, well, if there is a possibility to have the North American premiere at the um, AFI, that should be great, you know.